Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. If you're new, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. For today's video, we're just going to do an ILS, getting vectors to final. I managed to attach some fancy equipment. We got the G5s and the Aspen um, EFD 1000 so we can uh, look at different perspective of how everything goes. We also have the 430s and the GTN uh, 650. Now before you execute the approach, don't forget to get the latest ATIS, build the approach on whatever navigation equipment you have on board, brief it so you don't miss any essential information, frequencies, localizers, nav frequencies, etc. And lastly, go over the approach checklist. As we're turning to intercept the localizer, this would normally be the place where they authorize us for the approach and would ask us to change the frequency to the tower um, but we're just gonna keep everything how it is since it's just a simulator now we're three miles away from the final approach fix it's always very important to fly ahead of the airplane and when you have spare time obviously cross check everything that you have the appropriate approach chart that the proper radio frequencies are set both for communication and navigation verify that you have the correct uh, final approach course set and that you have done all your checklists the descent and approach checklist align the heading indicator to the, the magnetic compass and since we are doing an ILS which is a precision approach we will begin configuring the aircraft when we are one dot below the glide slope this is where we're going to reduce the power to 1800 rpm put the carburetor heat on flaps 10 and start the time now for the airspeed that could vary a little bit because depending on which category your aircraft belongs to there's gonna have different speed so make sure you know the in which category your aircraft falls down to now one of the last things we'll look at will be our standard callouts we already done quite a few I mean taking into consideration the approach checklist landing checklist and um, the following ones are important when we are at a thousand feet we'll call out 1000 feet stabilize 200 feet uh, above our minimums and then obviously when we reach our minimums we'll do that call out as well when we have the runway in sight or in case uh, we don't have the runway in sight and we need a go miss we'll just notify going miss to the tower and to the co-pilot if you have any now the call outs I have provided for you guys are very generic you should obviously follow the ones from your flight school or the company you fly for but it will do for this video now as we capture the glide slope and have intercepted the localizer it's very important in this phase to apply minimum correction and as we start descending we should maintain roughly around 500 feet per minute uh, what's a good rule of thumb you could do is um, multiply your ground speed by five that's what I normally do for example if we have 90 knots uh, ground speed you times that by five they'll give you 450 and more or less you maintain 450 500 feet uh, so you can uh, maintain that glide slope uh, captured at all times or approximately whatever will allow you to keep that glide slope where you want it to be. It's um, crucial for this phase to have a lot of concentration. There's going to be a, a lot of things that are going to be happening at once. It's very important not just to focus on one particular instrument. I mean, don't give all your attention to one instrument, but constantly uh, cross check everything, your distance, your airspeed, uh, your rate of descent, that you are on the correct glide path, your localizer. So keep rotating, do proper instrument scanning. Now, as you guys can see, we are reaching the 1000 feet callout, which we basically just say 1000 feet stabilized. Remember, this is a critical point during the approach, specifically when the aircraft descends below 1000 feet. So why do we say stabilize or 1000 feet stabilize? The aircraft should be in stable configuration or stable conditions for landing. This means that we must have the correct airspeed and the correct uh, rate of descent. Proper configuration, so if your aircraft has a landing gear, make sure it's down, flaps as required, and obviously on the correct flight path to the runway. 
This is also very, uh, it's a safety concern, vocalizing this call out serves as a confirmation among the crew that the aircraft is in safe conditions and controlled state for landing, allowing for an early identification of any deviations. And this is where when you fly with someone else, crew coordination comes into place. It reinforces communication between pilots, ensuring that both are aware of the approach status and ready to respond if conditions are not met. Now the next call out will be the 200 feet above minimum call out, which we're crossing right now at 458. This helps us and prepares for the next <laughs> call out, which is going to be the minimums, and it's crucial for the ILS, a precision approach. When we reach our minimums of 258, if we do not have the runway in sight, we will initiate a, a misapproach, hold as published as instructed by our approach plate, and if we do have the runway inside, we'll call out runway inside, continue and land the airplane. And we just hit our minimum. So in this case, we'll just continue and land the airplane. Well, there you have it, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe for more content. Until next time.